Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us on TCM as we continue with our night of James Bond movies. We just presented the first, Dr. No. The Bond movies, which we'll have every Thursday night in September, are part of our month-long salute to the production entity behind the franchise, United Artists. We'll move chronologically through the Bond films each Thursday night, and we'll make some headway, too. We'll get into the Pierce Brosnan Bond films by the end of the month. Up next, the second Bond picture, released in 1963 in England, 1964 in the States, from Russia with Love. Sean Connery makes his second appearance as 007, and this time he's taking on a conglomerate of villains from the evil crime cartel Spectre, Special Executive for Counterintelligence, Terrorism, Revenge, and Espionage. Such a good acronym. Spectre is led by the mysterious number one. The organization has set an obvious trap for Bond using a Russian spy who Bond earnestly says is the most beautiful girl he's ever seen, played by Daniela Bianchi. Though this was the second movie in the Bond series, it was the first to introduce the famous Bond music at length, both the main theme and composer John Barry's 007 action theme. From Russia with Love was also the first Bond film to amuse the characters and the audience with Bond's spy gadgetry supplied by Q Branch. Bond is given what looks like an ordinary attaché case, but as you'll see, it is anything but ordinary. It has a side pocket to hold the morning paper and an interior zipper for fountain pens or coins for the meter. The villains have some secret weaponry too, including shoes with a particularly diabolical pointed toe. They're worn by Lottie Lenya, one of the most memorable villains of the franchise. The cast also includes Pedro Armendariz as Bond's main ally in his final screen role. Armendariz got the role after being recommended by his longtime friend, director John Ford. There's also Robert Shaw, blonder than you're used to seeing him. From United Artists in 1963, also with Bernard Lee as M and Lois Maxwell as Miss Moneypenny, directed by Terence Young, from Russia with Love.
From Russia with Love, built on the enormous success of the first James Bond picture, Dr. No, and avoided the sophomore slump that plagues some movie franchises. The seemingly overnight success of James Bond, though, took nearly a decade to happen. Ian Fleming's first James Bond thriller, Casino Royale, was published in 1953. Fleming sold the movie rights to Casino Royale for $6,000, but then had a hard time generating any immediate traction on that adaptation or any adaptation for any of his other books over the next few years. That all changed when, at the same time, a Canadian producer, Harry Saltzman, and a London-based producer, Albert Cubby Broccoli, showed an interest in Fleming's books, converging to form their own production company and securing the rights to Fleming's current and future Bond novels, with the exception of Casino Royale. Columbia Pictures passed on the Enterprise, but United Artists was prepared to take a chance on a potential series of hits, and the studio's risk became an enormous financial reward. Up next, the third and arguably most popular of the Sean Connery Bond movies, with easily the most memorable theme song of the series, sung by Shirley Bassey.